A while back, a story was released of the first functioning artificial leaf, a material that encases chloroplasts into silk proteins to generate oxygen from water and light. Websites rushed to hail the invention as a viable means to generate oxygen inside spacecrafts or off-Earth colonies on Mars or the Moon. If the leaf really works as the hype would have us to believe, then it's really a giant leap forward. Its creator is Julian Melchiori, a student at the Royal College of Art. He claims he's created the first man-made biologically functioning leaf that takes in carbon dioxide, water and light and releases oxygen. He said the following, This material has an amazing property of stabilizing the chloroplast. As an outcome, I have the first photosynthetic material that is living and breathing as a leaf does. The leaf could be used in space exploration as an oxygen generator. Its advantage over regular plants would be that it doesn't require soil or special nutrients, and isn't confined to any problems that plant growth might face in zero gravity. Here on Earth, the leaf could be used for both indoor and outdoor environments, literally providing a breath of fresh air. It all sounds very exciting, but is it all just for show? Wrapping chloroplast into silk proteins is a great idea, yet while the design may provide photosynthesis, it's highly unlikely this can be sustained. Chloroplasts are membrane-wrapped organelles. As such, they depend on various cellular pathways that cycle membranes and proteins to keep healthy. So once you put them out of their environments, they'll stop working. Dr. Wim Vermas of Arizona State University's Center for Bioenergy and Photosynthesis said this, While it may possibly be true that silk proteins stabilize chloroplast function somehow, proteins in a cell are in a constant state of turnover some more than others, and eventually on the scale of hours or perhaps days the system will inactivate. In isolated chloroplasts spread out on silk, no new nuclear encoded proteins can be accessed, and as much of the proteins in the chloroplast need to be important, the life of an isolated chloroplast is necessarily short-lived, so it won't be surviving long enough to be useful for a space mission. For now, the best means of generating oxygen in space remains electrolysis, a process which uses electricity to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. The electricity is sourced from solar panels strapped on the spaceship or space station. Melchiori's leaf has added the advantage of working without any external energy input, that's if it works in the first place. We've only been offered a superficial view of its workings. Personally, I hope it eventually works. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more countdown videos.